Hello everyone. In this lecture today, I'm going to talk to you about inflammasome. So what is inflammasome? Inflammasome is derived from the word inflammation and this reflects the function of this inflammasome complex. Okay, and the suffix som uh, is derived from the Greek word soma, which means body, which is frequently used in cell biology to, to define entities or molecular complexes such as proteosome, liposome, or ribosome. So basically, what is inflammasome? Inflammasome is a complex, okay, whose ultimate function is to carry out inflammation, okay. Inflammasome is derived from inflammation. Inflammation is the function that is carried out by this complex, inflammasome, okay. So, uh, what is more on inflammasome we have is that Inflammasome, like I said earlier, are the cytoplasmic multiprotein complexes that are comprising a sensory, sensor protein, inflammatory caspases, in some but in not, not all cases, adapter protein connecting the two, okay? So here I talked about what is inflammasome. So now here I'm going to talk about what are the different constituents of inflammasome. Inflammasome com complex, it consists of sensor molecule. Okay, sensor molecule and the effector molecule and also adapter molecule that connects sensor and the effector. But not in all inflammasome we have this adapter molecule. Okay, this is what you must understand. So what are the different functions of these different molecules that I will discuss in the later part. Okay, the summary of this slide is that inflammasome is a multiprotein complex. Okay. Which, cons which, which comprises sensor protein, right? The, that, the, the effector molecule in some cases, but not in all cases, the adapter molecule connecting sensor molecule and the effector molecule, right? So the function of this complex, this inflammasome complex is to perform inflammation, okay? Inflammation is the ultimate function of this complex, okay? So, Inflammasome assembly and activation. Here I'm going to show you uh, what is inflammasome assembly and how this is activated. Okay, so there are different stimuli. The stimuli are derived from micro microbiome from our body, you know, commensal bacteria, commensal fungi, or different pathogen derived signals such as bacteria, fungi, parasites, and viruses, and also host derived signals such as mitochondrial dysfunction, reactive oxygen species, ion flux, and metabolic factors. Okay, these are the different stimuli. These different stimuli. These stimuli are from microbiome, from pathogens, or can also be from the host. Okay, these different signals. These signals are sensed by the sensor molecule. Okay, for example, NLRC4, NASCT, or in 200 so these these are the sensor molecule of the inflammasome that sends these different inflammatory these, these signals okay these signals right these signals are sensed by the sensor molecule of the inflammasome and as you see here in this inflammasome they, there is missing adapter molecule this is ASC okay this molecule is the adapter molecule but here we have adapter molecule and also here we have adapter molecule right but here we don't have an after molecule like i said in my previous slide that inflammasome complex not necessarily always has the adapter molecule okay so what happens different stimuli microbiome derived pathogen derived or host derived signals these signals are sensed by the sensor molecule of the inflammasome and this actually leads to the activation of inflammasome complex so what happens then then what happens is that these activate this effector molecule, you know, these are the effector molecule, this porocaspase 1, procaspase 1, procaspase 1, this is the, this is an enzyme, okay? So this is the effector molecule that does the function. What it does, once these inflammatory complex, they are activated by this inflammation, these uh, inflammasome complex, sorry, once these inflammasome complex are once they sense these in this stimuli from microbiome pathogen or host, they get activated and after activation, what happens is that, for example, this pro-interleukin-1-beta or pro-interleukin-1-18, this will be converted 
by active cash phase 8 or cash phase 1 to interleukin 1 beta or interleukin 118. So from where this free from here cash phase 8 came and from here the pro, pro, pro cash, cash phase 1 come okay out of the activation. So this pro cash phase 1 is converted to cash phase 1. Cash phase 1 is the activated form right similar same thing for here pro cash phase 8 is converted to cash phase 8. This is the active form of this enzyme right. So then pro interleukin 1 beta or pro interleukin 118 will be converted by these activated caspase okay these are the activated caspase into interleukin 1 beta or interleukin 118 so then what happens and that actually results in inflammation because these are the cytokines these cytokines leads to the inflammation okay inflammation so this is how this inflammation complex they they result in the inflammation Inflammation is the ultimate function of this inflammation. Okay, so another thing that they have shown here in this paper is that gastermin D is one molecule. This molecule is converted, you know, is cleaved into terminal frag fragment by active caspase 1145. Okay, or active caspase 1, and that leads to pyrotopsis. It's an inflammatory cell death. The details of which I will discuss in the in the later part. One thing is that this terminal fragment results in pyrotopsis. Another thing is that it can activate NLRP3 inflammation complex. Okay. So finally, this active caspase 8 can also result in apoptosis. So from this slide, what, what is the synopsis of this slide is that there are different stimuli, microbe derived, micro, microbiome derived, pathogen derived, host derived signals. These signals are sensed by the sensor molecule of the inflammation right and then after that inflammation inflammation complex gets activated that results in activated caspases okay this pro caspase 1 converts into active form and similarly here pro caspase 8 is converted into its active form caspase 8 then what happens that is, is that this pro interleukin 1 beta or pro interleukin 118 they they will be cleaved by these active caspases into interleukin 1 beta and interleukin 118 and that results in inflammasome and here in this case results in pyrotopsis and here it results in apoptosis so these inflammation inflammation pyrotopsis and the apoptosis are the functions effector functions of inflammation complex so now I talked about what is inflammation, inflammasome, how it's get activated, and what are its functions. So here in this slide, I'm going to talk about what are canonical and non-canonical inflammasome. In case of canonical inflammasome, the, the difference is the enzyme, the caspase enzyme that is involved. In case of canonical inflammasome, there is involvement of caspase 1 activation, whereas in case of non-canonical inflammasome, there is Enzymatic activation of caspase 11 or equivalent caspase 4 and 5 in humans is caspase 11 in mouse or caspase 8, right? So I already talked the effector functions are inflammation, pyrotopsis and apoptosis, okay? So appropriate inflammation activation is important. Why? Because the host should be able to cope with foreign pathogens or tissue damage for that appropriate inflammation activation is necessary but when there is aberrant inflammation activation that can cause uncontrolled tissue responses that may contribute to various diseases such as auto-inflammatory disorders, cardiometabolic diseases, cancer and neurodegenerative diseases. Okay, So the most important point is that the activation of inflammation must be tightly regulated and because Everent inflammation activation can result in various diseases such as auto-inflammatory disease, cardiometabolic disease, cancer, and neurodegenerative diseases. Okay. So finally, even though I told briefly about pyrotopsis, here I'm going to describe a little bit more about this. Pyrotopsis is the, the effector function of inflammation complex. It is an inflammatory type of cell death. This is called pyro. Pyro means fire or heat, right? So pyrotopsis is a lytic form of programmed cell death in response to these different signals from pathogens or host-derived signals. Pyrotopsis is morphologically distinct from apoptosis, okay? It is different from apoptosis. How it is different? Because it is characterized by cell swelling, 
membrane rupture and subsequent release of inflammatory compounds into the extracellular space such as interleukin 1 beta, interleukin 6, and interleukin 18. Okay, so with this, this concludes the uh, today's lecture. Thank you very much for your kind attention.